moving on quickly, I wanted to touch upon this courtesy of RA. And I think this is a really interesting story because, if anything, it's a constant reminder of how difficult it must be to navigate the dance music or nightlife scene when you're uh, from a somewhat I wouldn't say marginalized community but you're from a you know niche community especially when you're present representing for the queer lgbtq plus folk and you eventually create a party that's good enough where it kind of garners the reaction and the reception and the love and the adoration from normies like myself and straights and stuff and eventually you get to a point where you lose the essence of what you originally began where you originally started with right use the ethos the idea the principles um the community whatever it sometimes go by the wayside and usually involves money right other investors come in they have their own you know wants and needs that they're going to place on you you might have to make some con you know yeah and then you might have to make some compromises it just really is an upside down backwards and forwards thing and it's kind of kind of a thankless task really it's sort of like you've got two options if you start a night or you start you start a club night um you start a label you start whatever it may be you've got two options you just keep it self-sufficient and you use it to service your local community service your friends inspire those around you inspire future generations and just have it like be a grassroots local thing and any money that you make from it you just plug it back into the business and help to kind of keep the running costs going so you don't have to kind of be out of pocket or you kind of build it to where it kind of can come to a place where you can attract investors and you essentially relinquish some of the control and some of the um way that you do things um to whoever's investing or you make some compromises in the middle but there is no in between there is no ability really i've seen so far because i'm a big believer in like not selling out but i'm also not naive enough to to realize that getting the money to from commercial work in order to kind of you know go and do your stuff that you actually want to do is the greatest thing like i think of fashion i think of all the major because it happens a lot in fashion industry like some big time photographers and stylists they'll essentially pay their rent uh, large chunks of their mortgages or whatever it may be by doing commercial work like working for a gap um you know a h&m a zara whatever it may be but then they'll use that money to sustain themselves but then they'll do all the stuff with 032c id magazine days are confused basically for free in order to kind of get some cool ideas out there and to kind of keep your name popping so you do all this kind of corny lame stuff with the high street brands that you don't really not necessarily proud of or it's not essentially that creative but then you use that money to funnel it back into your quote-unquote underground local stuff that you actually care about and then that ironically enough is going to get you the attention of more big brands so you can keep that cycle going but in dance music or in nightlife it doesn't seem to be the thing as soon as you take the money from the overground it completely devalues and sort of um uh ruins whatever you've built in it's just a kind of you know it's just a thing that happens all the time we already saw the reaction with people um, with festivals here in the uk that have been bought out or invested by live nation and stuff people are already getting nervous and shook and stuff so i think it is definitely an issue that's kind of plaguing nightlife that people haven't necessarily figured out a way to kind of combat just yet and this is another example of it which is quite heartbreaking to be honest it says here local queer collectives urge manchester festival homo block to take a genuine feedback on board courtesy of ra five local queer collectives have released a statement addressing the concerns surrounding manchester festival homo block which i've heard of myself yeah, but i've never been to in a final statement shared with resident advisor high hops outlined a list of concern raised by artists and promoters employed by homo block the brainchild of a long-running queer party called homo electric um the statement has been supported by meat free tough act and members of all hands on deck and love muscle those are probably some of the best gay centric names i've ever heard in my entire life meat free tough act um all hands on deck and love muscle absolutely brilliant the concerns um include poor pay for local performers a lack of transparency surrounding charity donations and festival ties to saudi arabia <laughs> right this is beyond selling out this is like it just goes against everything you probably stand for who <laughs> oppression of lgbtq rights is well documented via its affiliation with the warehouse project saudi arabia's public investment fund the ipfi has a stake in live nation worth one billion live nation owns shares in the warehouse project so by extension any artist out there that's essentially you know espousing 
a woke ideology out there and really trying to put it to the man and you know have all these stances they're taking on social media using certain hashtags if they're essentially having their gigs powered by or sponsored with or enabled by live nation you're essentially being a hypocrite right because you've got by way of their investment you've got a very oppressive regime that basically goes against everything you stand for essentially invested in your show or monetarily gaining from your show or from your fans being there so it must be such a conundrum to be to you know to kind of figure out if you're an artist like where do you draw the line bamba bamba and it quotes while of course any club night needs to make money homo electric decided to work with the warehouse project to produce homo block in effect employing many of the businesses um employing sorry many of the business models um a number of concessions and the site of the community they're meant to be serving for profit the warehouse project is highly lucrative and successful business and as such is uh, is of course set up to make money that's why they have such a high ticket and drink prices it's why they have such an incredibly early um final entry times and that's why they employ a restrictive exclusivity clause for the djs i get all these concerns but there's no need to trash flipping warehouse project like i don't understand this idea that we have in dance music where these things can't live um where everything can't but it has to be so many different divisions and everything has to be the same like you have to be able to appeal to the general public so the person who wants to just go to a party at the warehouse project and be able to you know eat some stripping street food on the outside drink some overpriced you know drinks and be amongst people who are okay that would smoke and lights all everywhere they should be allowed to do that also but if you want to go to maybe a more underground establishment where they maybe have door pickers which basically means if you pay even if you pay it doesn't guarantee your entry they may have a strict dress code they may have wardens and safe spaces inside of the place it may be a particular thing that's very hardcore in terms of leaning more so lgbt i think both places can coexist you don't need it doesn't need to be an either or i don't actually like this idea that you know for whatever reason people in dance music don't have any capacity to understand why there should be a need to have major big ticket kind of corny normie clubs out there for the normies like they also need to party and have a good time and if anything it's all in the same sort of ecosystem i think if those places thrive the underground that we all love thrives also but you know maybe i'm just an idiot or an, or a naive optimist when it comes to that sort of stuff it continues we think a queer event of this size and involving this much money in our city should be predominantly run by and on the feedback of queer people who live this every single day in our community. Just because a gap in the market exists doesn't mean it should be exploited and filled with people who have no experience of growing up LGBT. Welcome to capitalism. If there's a gap, people will exploit. So that's a little naive. It continues. The statement also stresses that the criticism has meant to start a conversation, initiate change, rather than simply be an attack on Homo Electric it's too late now in follows another statement from high hops um posted by last tuesday november 22nd which raised some of the many concerns for the first time i also spoke to the founder of another queer dance music crew about the way in which the number of collectives were misled in promoting the debut homo block edition 2019 now this is the cunty side of it this is the real cunty side listen to this the DJ and promoter who asked to remain anonymous said promoters were across the UK were approached by Homo Electric and asked to share promotional material for the new festival via social media. The source said that they were asked to do so under the pretense that they were being performing at Homo Block. Honestly, this happened to me also, so I, I really do um, sympathize with this. I've happened to me many times. I've had the whole classic thing of being booked to play in some Soho party somewhere. You're meant to bring people down. The party doesn't maybe go as successfully as a promoter wanted it to because they wanted to employ you as not only a DJ but also a ticket salesman. Then you're meant to get paid your £50 that you're going to use to get yourself a flipping the impressive burg on the way back because you had a terrible set and all of a sudden you can't find the flipping promoter anywhere in the club and it completely disappeared i've happened to me many 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 times so it's the same sort of kind of scumminess where you have to promote stuff and you don't get your money i understand or you don't even get to play that's something awful it continues but according to the source when the lineup was finally released late weeks later many of the collectives weren't on the bill it felt like they were using the clout of the local queer nights to establish a brand people bought tickets thinking people were going to see their friends going to play and um, there were also absolutely no mention that it was going to be a collaboration with the warehouse project and in hindsight that felt very disingenuous which is definitely what they did they definitely should for sure i can imagine if you're going to do a festival or a big event to, of that kind of scale and you also want to have the core 
group of people who helped to found that scene to be a part of it because if not what's the point of throwing the type of event like that you get them involved and the provider that they're going to be able to play in this sort of thing which is essentially a real privilege also because it means hey i was here supporting you guys when you were you know doing this thing in a warehouse somewhere and we we're running the power for a generator and now suddenly you're able to do this massive event that's in a commercial building where you're having to have staff and stuff it's really legit so it's great to see this evolution but little do you know warehouse project and the saudi government are slipping slipping those guys a little you know brown envelope under the table in a statement sent to RA, Home Electric founder Luke Cowdery, aka Luca, uh, sorry, aka Luke Una, um, addressed some of the issues of the joint statement. <laughs> it basically said, "Look, we're going to continue doing this thing because I have staff to pay." It basically says here, on working with the warehouse project, he said, um, "He said they did so to help with the considerable advance work, production, and risk that an event like Homer Block brings." He also stressed that Homer Block had raised close to 100000 for charity for the last two events and that there were 200 fully paid, mainly local um, LGBTQ plus artists and performers involved in this year's edition. The funny thing about these sort of statements when you're kind of trying to excuse yourself, you don't try and bring up charity, try and address their concerns. But if you're some of the people who are protesting or kind of throwing your toys out of the pram about this, you're in a bit of a predicament because for sure you have friends who are working on that show right who are working on that festival who are part of that whole thing that's going forward and those friends are probably hoping that that event is successful so it can continue year after year so you've essentially got a guaranteed bit of work and a guaranteed bit of income at a particular time of the year every single year so you're a bit in a predicament do you keep pushing for this change and get to a point where there's enough social media outcry that people like the warehouse project or whatever it may be don't need a blowback or the hassle like you know what we were doing you guys a favor because we wanted to be a part of this thing we don't really need this and you just wash your hands of you and pull away and now suddenly you got all these people out of work who are part of the community that you're serving but they don't maybe you know maybe they chose the money over the principles who knows but who doesn't matter but you're in a bit of a predicament if you keep pushing this you're going to risk you know taking money out of the pockets of people that you know and love or from the same community as you and if you leave it alone it might grow into being you know um the time warp of like you know of like the lgbtq plus scene <laughs> and then now you're there sitting there thinking bloody hell, how did to get to this so it must be a weird place to be a part of it continues here sam candle co-founder warehouse project look at his statement compared to luke Art una right he's just like look i'm just here for the vibes he says here the world's project's role in the event is to support um from a production perspective and to help them to realize their vision we're able to share the physical infrastructure and some of our core team without without which the event would not be viable build as a, build as a queer block party for all homo block has been running for um at the 10,000 capacity at mayfield depot since 2019 home electric was one of manchester's favorite queer parties launched in 1997 see that's what i can understand though imagine you are with these guys since 1997 they maybe had a particular kind of ethos maybe they espouse certain anti-capitalistic rhetoric on social media maybe some of the artwork was very politically charged very socially uh, you know um maybe socially aware whatever it may be and then suddenly here they are in bed with live nation you know by proxy then taking money from the saudi government which is obviously completely oppressive to everything that you stand for and definitely against it and now you're in a conundrum you're in a quagmire what do you do read the statement below blah blah, blah. i'm not gonna read this whole statement but i don't know i just i feel sympathy for both sides i feel sympathy for the people who were sold a lemon and kind of hoodwinked because i've been holding myself coming up as being a you know a, you know a, a pretty unknown uh, dj and trying to make my way forward you kind of always kind of end up in situations where you essentially get scammed and i've also got sympathy for the people who are running homo electric and which evolved into homo block because after a while if you want to do an event a festival that services 10,000 people you're gonna need to make some money you can't be running these things for free there has to come a point where money needs to be kind of passing through the till so you can afford to pay people and much like what happened in Berlin during the lockdown with the pandemic and stuff I remember reading loads of articles about people when the first maybe when the first restrictions kind of were lifted a slightly whatever it may be certain fa certain managers and owners and bookers for certain clubs were essentially um bittersweet because they're like oh it's amazing that we're being able to reopen because we can obviously you know um 
make some money and obviously be able to service a local community, put events back on and be out there. But a lot of them were saying things that I saw loads of people from various places, not even only Berlin, like places like Cologne and Dortmund and stuff like that and Munich and whatever they were saying. But in the process of all this lockdown and stuff and all this hysteria and COVID, they've lost many, many great employees. And for the most part, you would imagine, especially places like Berlin, where the you know nightlife is a really big deal over there. People take it really seriously. The staff members are part of what make these spaces amazing, right? I've been to places like Paloma Bar, for instance, in Kreuzberg, and that's another good one where all the staff are great and they're really friendly. Maybe because it helps because a lot of them are English, especially the ones I bumped into down there. You look at places like Same Heads is a good example. The early parts of Bergheim when that first opened was like that. Also, Trezor was like that. Also, there's always people that work there that you kind of see every week weekend if you're a regular that make that place what it is and they kind of add to the community side of it so if you're a place like homo block homo electric you've got those people they form the basis of what you're doing but then you also want to inspire and further the message that you're doing to many many more people and that will obviously going to invite some normies and invite some general public people also and just to i'd imagine just to run an event like that and to run a festival like that, day festival, whatever it may be, the production cost involved, especially in a place like England, where I feel like, you know, for whatever reason, this country is very much against parties and the fun and stuff. So you have to kind of go around so many obstacles and it probably helps to have a partner like, like Nive Nation. We have maybe some people who work in local councils who maybe have some, you know, stuff to do with kind of legislation, whatever it may be. I'm sure those partnerships work with doing those kind of boring office backroom you know bureaucratic type stuff and they will definitely help as well so you're kind of a bit of a quagmire do you keep servicing a local community and essentially bleed yourself dry over a very slow period because you can't make any money but you're being true to your scene or do you take the money from these big corporations to allow you to continue doing what you love in the process paying people um for their work and for their time um especially during this you know period in our lives now we're in a flipping global recession it's a really really tough place to be in and i don't i, I don't I, <laughs> I don't envy anybody in this situation i don't envy the people who are you know um fighting against this um link up with live nation i don't you know i don't flip in envy anybody involved in homo block and trying to basically i should reassure people in your community that you're doing this for the right reasons it's tough it's really it's tough but like i said i've seen it here already in london we have the same situation that happened prior to crossbreed shutting down that king party there's sort of the similar i think thing will happen mostly with places like you know inferno maybe budokai maybe won't have the same issue because i guess maybe because it's a mostly a queer type of event i feel like those events for some reason always have a bit of a ceiling i don't know why that is particularly but it seems to be a thing but for some reason the lgbt um themed kind of nights with you know quote unquote the gay nights they always tend to have an appeal that can kind of far supersede where they sort of started from. I think of some, you know, a collective DJs like Horsemeat Disco. I used to see those guys playing in places, you know, warehouse spaces in Shoreditch and shit. And now they become, you know, global stars and whatnot. And I'm assuming if they did do a party, which I don't know, they did, yeah. Horsemeat Disco used to do a party at the Vauxhall, right? That pub down south. I'm sure maybe there's part of their community that are feeling also that maybe things have changed now the bigger that they've got. So, I'm assuming it maybe might happen with a collective out there in Berlin, right? That Cox and more group, they might be having the same sort of issues also going forward. Maybe they might have the same thing where an investor comes along and is like, hey, we want to take your party and take it global or make it more, you know, regular and consistent or put it in a certain sort of space, whatever it may be. There are all these kind of troubles and all these kind of hassles you kind of have to fight against, you know, every single day. So it must be really hard to deal with. But, you know, sympathy goes out to both sides. So I hope they work it out and reach a amicable conclusion because the last thing I want to see is anybody lose their jobs because that's absolutely lame.